everyone. Today we're going to talk about implementing decision trees in R. Uh, so uh, I have a script here. This is the script that I provided you, and I'm just going to go through each part of it. So the you know first thing to do is set the working directory like we always do, just so we make sure we're saving our data in the right place and getting our data from the right place. So we can run that. And then the next thing is we're going to use a package called R part. If for some reason, again, that's not available, you can click over to packages, type in R part in, oh, I typed in T part, so it didn't show up, R part in here, and it should be there, and you can install it or download it, whatever you need to do, right? Install and download and install, right? Um, then the next part is we're gonna read in that bank data again, and hopefully it reads in. Um, and then the next part after that is we're gonna look at the training data and the testing data. Right, pull that all in. And then after that, this is basically just doing the uh, kind of explore exploration that we did in the exploratory spot. Um, I want to do it real quick just to show you because we talked about that information entropy number and now this piece of code that was in the original file will actually make sense. That H of Y that it's calculating there, that is the information entropy under the original uh, distribution. So it's 0.32 as we talked about in the lecture, right? Um, and then, you know, there's some additional data explorations if you want to play around with them. But then the next thing I did was I calculated out the int information entropy for splitting on P of outcome by hand, like we talked about. So, um, you know, I count up, you know, so what, what, we, what do we need to do that? Well, first we need to know, um, so this is for the failure class, for the failure class of P of outcome, right? How many yeses and how many noes are there, right? And then we can divide through the different classes using the information entropy calculation. And we get this result of the un unknown, it's 0.234, right? And then we could do the same thing again. Sorry, that was a failure. And then we can do the same thing again with unknown, right? It's 0.322. Do the same thing with other, right? 0.295, right? And then finally with success, and we get 0.691. And if you remember, and I'm gonna pull up the slides real quick, you know, that was, we got 0 0.23, 0 0.32, 0 0.29, 0 0.69, right? And that's essentially what we're getting right there. And then in order to combine them all, then we have to take the probability of being split into each of those classes, right? So how many there are total. So then once we take those information entropy numbers, we can multiply by the number of unknowns, number of failure, right? What is it called? It's uh, gotta make sure I get my terms right. Failure, unknown, other, and success, right? Um, so that's just showing you that you can, in fact, do these information entry calculations yourself, right? You don't have to uh, trust that it's doing the math, uh, but you know, usually we're not gonna do them all by hand because it'll take a long time. And just a small note, right? It's doing the log here, but it is doing the log in base two. So that it makes it compares with the other numbers we're doing. So now, you know, that's just a quick explanation of how to do information entropy. How do you actually do decision trees? Well, you know, it's much like a lot of things in R, and this is why I use R for this class. All you gotta do is write the formula for what you want the features to be and what you want the outcome to be, and it does most of the rest itself. So we're gonna use R part, which is a recursive partitioning tree algorithm, right? Uh, and we're gonna kind of regress Y on age plus duration plus month plus previous outcome. The data equals the training data that we create called in before. And the method equals class, meaning we're doing a classification. Uh, and then there's one um, parameter that I'm passing in here, which I'm telling you to use information gain rather than using the Gini coefficient, right? Um, so if I run that, oh, don't delete it, run it, right? It doesn't take very long to run. And then you can see I can actually get that that tree that I showed you in the, in the graph. Um, and then if I plot it, right? Um, if I just plot the tree, I just get the sketch of the tree, right? There's then a command called text, right? That will add the actual labels to it. And then I can save it off and let's see, it'll, look a little better if I blow it up a little over here, right? But you can kind of see it right there, right? Uh, let's see if I make this bigger. Yeah, it's, it never looks great in this viewer. I would, you know, look at, that's why I always save it off and look at it in the, in the final format, right? Okay, let's just make this smaller again. 
Okay. Um, and I'm going to do that quartz.save, which is the easy way. Oh, I forgot my little tilde. Which is the easy way on the Mac, right? If you're on the PC, you have to first do PNG or TIFF or whatever, and then the file name, and then um, device that off afterwards, right? And you'll get the same thing. So if you're doing it that way, you want to do it up here, right? I can just show you real quick. PNG, right? Uh, tilde slash desktop slash tree dot PNG and then device dot off right and if I run that piece of code right it should work too um, let me just close everything out up here so you can scale better Okay, so there, if you look at my desktop, right, you can see the tree.png, and there it is, right? And so that's a little bit easier way to read it, right? So now you can see that if the duration is less than 474.5, and, you know, the month is one of these months, and those letters specify specific months, right, um, then you're going to go down this tree. Otherwise, if the duration is greater, right, and as we talked about, that just basically means they talked to them a long time on the previous phone call, right, then there's a probability of yes, and that's what the tree comes up with, right? Um, so let's go back to our studio now. So um, I'll, t I'll leave both of those in the code so that when I upload it, it's there for those of you who are looking for it. Uh, but you only need to use course.save if it's a, um, a Mac, otherwise you're going to need to use that PNG code. So what does the actual, you know, confusion matrix look like? And here we go. We've got the actual confusion matrix, right? Using the predict code again um, on the training data. And there it is on the testing data. And roughly, you know, the off diagonal is where you look to see the things it gets wrong. And roughly it gets about 3,200 of them wrong in this case. Now, we could try this again. I just want to show you that one, you know, so I did, I left another example in here where the only parameter I changed was that now I'm splitting using Gini coefficient as opposed to information gain. And remember, Gini coefficient is going to be choose the feature that maximizes the class inequality, right? And when we do that, right, then we get the result. And remember that 32, roughly 3,200, 3,300 incorrect, right? Uh, we're gonna, we can do the same thing again. Right, and we get maybe a slightly different tree. It doesn't seem like it's terribly different. This one actually only has, yeah, I guess it is different. This one checks for almost all months except for I think like one, no, three months, right? Because it does nine months here. And in those situations, it says no, otherwise it does yes, right? So it's a slightly different format of the tree. Um, if you look at the training data, the testing data, right? Again, it's about, 3,200, maybe this one's a little bit less, 3,300, maybe a little bit less. So this one might, the Gini coefficient might do slightly better on this particular data set. But that's the basic idea about how to use uh, decision trees in R. Um, and in the next section, we're going to talk about how to use random forests instead.